morning. It's 10 past nine on Wednesday morning, 10 past nine UK time. Uh, we've got a little bit of an update here. We've got um, equities or S&P limit down again, Europe um, significantly down once more. But I just wanted to focus on how I think the market structure, or not so much the market structure, but how things are evolving and, and how we've moved from one phase into a, a new phase over the last week. I think the phase one that we saw, which was at the beginning of this whole coronavirus event, that was just a sort of classic risk off flight to safety event. We saw equities down, we saw bonds up, we saw the funding currencies, and funding currencies, these are um, yen, euro, Swissy, where you'd had low yields in the past, people had hunted for yield elsewhere, well, these people were repatriating, so bringing back um, their capital. You saw yen going up versus the dollar, euro going up. And that was the first phase, and I think that lasted until the middle of last week. Really, the sort of the day I think it changes when Boeing announced that it had drawn down a 13.8 billion credit line, emergency credit line. I think since then, what we've been um, mainly seeing, the main driver, has been effectively a value at risk or a VAR shock and the funding and deleveraging cycle. In this one, what we're seeing now is bond yields going significantly higher. So bond yields have been up a lot. We've seen the dollar strength against everything, including euro, Swissy, and to a certain extent, the yen, which is the, normally the most safe haven currency. This morning at 8 a.m. UK time, the opening of the European markets, yields moved, currencies moved. That suggests there was a big de-risking going on there. So it looks like the smart beta um, portfolios and the, the risk parity portfolios are under extreme duress, and they're the ones that are being unwound in this phase. And we've seen the central banks throw quite a lot at this. And so far, it's not working because the central banks, they're using the 2008 rule book, which is fixed or put in place to deal with problems at the banks. Whereas today, the problems are at certain asset managers, certain shadow banks who took over the roles of prop desks and market making banks over the last 10 years because regulations forced normal banks out of the market. And the difference between the end of last year and this year, when they were doing repo at the end of last year, the world was not broken. Banks took the, the repo, took the cash, and were able to give it um, for leverage at some of these shadow banks. Today, because the risks are there, the repo is available, but no bank is taking it. These aren't the people who need it. It's other parts of the market. So this is, I think, where we're going. What we've got to watch here really is the dollar. The dollar we've talked about, if it moves aggressively to the upside, it tightens financial conditions. It makes things a lot worse. And we've got to watch this because the world we're changing into is one where we've seen this repatriation risk off. But in the future, what we're going to see is a complete collapse in global cash flows. This matters because 40% of non-US invoices are in dollars. 60% of central bank um, cash reserves are effectively dollars. There's 500 trillion of derivatives. Now, that's a gross number. The net is much smaller. There's anywhere between 14 and 25 trillion of dollar-denominated debt outside of the US. Because volumes are falling off a cliff, because oil prices and commodity prices are falling, available dollars in the system is falling as well. It doesn't matter whether you're a long-term dollar bull or bear. Right here, right now, we are seeing a dash for cash. We're seeing a funding crisis. We can see the funding crisis in things like FRA OIS. We talked about that before. It has come in slightly, so it has been alleviated slightly. TED spreads, this is things like, or TED spread can be one month LIBOR, so interbank, versus one month government bond yields. That's been blowing out the last few days. In Japanese yen, there's this um, cross-currency basis. If I have yen and I want to borrow dollars, the cost of doing that has been blowing out over the last four or five days. The yen itself has been in a relatively tight range, but volatility on the yen, one month volatility, has also blown out. These are the funding issues which are driving the market, which the Fed and other central banks have not yet fixed. That's what I think is going on right now with this move in yields, this big move up in longer dated yields that we've been seeing. It's this deleveraging, it's this market framework that's coming apart. In terms of one or two things to look at, we talked about copper hadn't sold off, it's now selling off. Look at the Kospi 200, this is the Korean market. 215, it closed there today, that's the 10 year support. Below there, I think there's some structured products that will cause volatility to go higher. Uh, and we're also seeing um, some more moves to the downside in oil. So that real economy is still suffering. So all these are taking place. We've got the VIX expiry in the US today. We've got the European and US index and options expiry on Friday. Hopefully that'll take some volatility out of the market. If it reduces volatility, it does reduce some of the VAR shock. Not much, but a little bit. Um, so these are things to watch for. But central banks, they really need to start targeting the real economy. 
the shadow banks and try and work out how to stop the deleveraging that seems to be going on among some of the smart beta risk parity type funds. So I think that's the market setup we've got today. But the big thing to watch for, as I said before, the dollar. We don't want the dollar in its broadest sense going significantly higher from here because that will tighten conditions further. Thanks.